Whatever is burdening our hearts, whatever I am guilty of, whatever I tried to hide from my God, this moment, let this moment be a moment of transparency between me and my God. Let's be able to tell him, here I am. St. Paul could say that, here I am. I am a wretched man. I don't know what I am doing. I end up doing what I do not want to do. Let us tell this to the Lord. I am enslaved to the powers of evil without trying to hide anything from our God. We want to tell him this. We want to tell him what the publican said. Here I am. Here I am, O oh God. I'm not even worthy to look at your face. I am a sinner. Have mercy on me, O oh God. Let's tell the Lord what the good thief said. Here I am. Remember me when you are in paradise. I have lost the paradise of my life. I have lost it because of my own sin and wickedness in my heart. Here I am, O Lord. Let the Holy Spirit move into our hearts because there is much in our hearts that we keep secret. Secrets of our past. Secrets hurting us. Secrets stinking in the depths of our hearts. Secrets we keep hiding. We have been doing it for a long time. Secrets that make our life miserable. The stench has been suffocating. The fear has been unbearable. Today, we want to offer all such secrets to our God. Here I am. Oh God, we want to keep open our hearts to all the sins of our past without any justification, without any attempt at argument. I don't want to argue with my God. I want to tell him, here I am, what the prodigal son said, I have sent, here I am. Coming back to you, my father, my Abba, I am shattered, I am broken. My own decisions have destroyed me. The people I trusted, the people I gave my life to, ram with all the burden of hurts weighing down on me. Holy Spirit, move. Let's keep our hands open in front of us waiting to feel the movement of the Spirit in the past, what moved in our souls, in our minds, in our hearts, what moved often was passions, desires of 
sexual pleasures, desires of greed, desires of anger, a passion to take revenge on others, but moved in our hearts were depressive thoughts, questions why people did this to me. All such movement will now be replaced by the comforting, refreshing movement of the Spirit, the gentle breeze of the Spirit, of the Spirit of love now flowing into our hearts. Spirit In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. My dear sisters and brothers, is God just? Is God just? Yes. Everyone agrees. I don't. I don't agree. You know why? If God were just, I would have had no chance with Him. I don't know about you. What does justice mean? Justice means to give everyone his, her due, right? That's what justice means. If I got what I deserve, if you got what you deserve, if God gave us what we deserved, what would we get? The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Then why are you alive? The just punishment for sin is destruction. When the word of God says that death, it means destruction. What you and I deserve, we rebelled against God. We rejected Him. We were searching for pleasures and gains and luxuries. Running away from God. And we deserve to be punished. We deserve to be destroyed. And we know this and yet, if you and I are still alive and thriving, it is because God is more than justice. God is mercy. God is compassion. You know, often when we speak of God, often we take words from a normal life experience. And we think justice is something great. Yes, it is. But... When we apply human justice to God, it's a very defective term. Because God's attitude to you and to me is more than justice. God is mercy. Mercy means an attitude of love that transcends justice. God gives me more than what I deserve. God does not give me what I deserve, but more. I am forgiven. I am saved. God's attitude towards me is an attitude of mercy and compassion. And recently, through the revelations given to Sister Saint Faustina, Jesus made it clear, my name is, my name is mercy, compassion. And that's what gives us, that's what gives us a courage a courage to come to God in spite of our sinfulness. I need not hide anything from my God. I need not put on a mask to come before God in order to be accepted by Him. I am already accepted. I am already forgiven. I am, I am already the beloved child of my God. God is pleased with me. All I need to do is to live out the good pleasure of my God in my day-to-day -day life. When we open the
the gospels we find something so beautiful something so significant broken people came to jesus with all their brokenness and jesus was always gentle with them always gentle with them jesus was always waiting to gain them for the heavenly father john chapter 4 the samaritan woman the samaritan woman she came to draw water from the well of jacob in the town of sikar bible scholars tell us that it was strange that this woman came to draw water to the well of jacob because well of jacob was about half a mile from the town of sikar and this was midday 12 o'clock midday now uh, the jews counted the hours of the day from morning 6 to evening 6 she came at the 6th hour we are told that means midday sun it's hot it's hot and there's always a dusty storm in samaria and no woman came to draw water at midday they came to draw water early morning or late at night late in the evening that's precisely why this woman came at midday because if she came in the morning or in the evening there would be other women there and they would have stories to tell stories to tell about the latest man who visited her at night this was a very sinful woman and yet jesus waited for her and the car that area the jews had so many memories about that area this was a a place known to belong to patriarch jacob this was the well used by jacob and later jacob bequeathed this area to joseph his dear son and joseph when he died in egypt they carried his body all the way here to bury him here because this was a place of great importance and significance for the jews at this place jesus was waiting for this woman all the jews looked at sikkar as a place with a lot of memories this woman comes draw water in a very gentle way jesus is asking her give me some water to drink strange a jew would never do that a jew would never take water from a samaritan because of the uh, caste enmity between samaritans and jews the jews despised samaritans and samaritans were angry with the jews because of their contempt caste enemies and yet in a very gentle way jesus is asking water give me some water to drink i am thirsty well a conversation begins there and this woman in spite of the fact that jesus was so gentle and so humble so noble before her this woman became more and more arrogant oh you were jew right a high caste ah i am a samaritan woman a low caste why do you ask me for water to a thirsty man asking for water that's how this woman responded all that enmity and anger in her heart came out in the way she spoke and then jesus had all the reason to react because um she said our father jacob our father jacob you know jews uh, would never uh, accept the samaritans were the children of patriarch jacob they would never accept this and yet jesus never argued whatever traditional enmity they had jesus never argued with her jesus was again gentle again gentle at one time jesus said uh, if you knew who was asking for water you would have asked him 
and he would have given you living water and then this woman despising him oh you giving me water but it's well is deep you don't have a bucket to draw water again arrogance and yet jesus was so kind and merciful was so compassionate and understanding and why there's a reason for this jesus knew very clearly what he came for john 4:34 jesus said i'm sent by the father my food is to do the will of my father food means what my nourishment what we spontaneously desire what we spontaneously take my nourishment my joy is to do the will of my father and again jesus said john 18:9 john 18:9 he was telling the father father i have not lost anyone i have not lost anyone whom you sent to me anyone who went to jesus anyone who came to jesus in every one of them jesus saw a son a daughter of the heavenly father in every one jesus saw a mission a mission to save them in this woman as well in this woman as well but you and i need to expect from jesus when we go to him when we go to him with our sin the burden in our hearts the way jesus looks at us is not the way a, a man would look at us a woman would look at us we are human beings and we will judge we will judge we will condemn we will misunderstand and if anyone knows a fault of mine he or she would try to expose me for their own benefit and that's what human behavior pattern is but jesus could not react because jesus had a mission a mission in his heart anyone who came to him whatever he or she may have done the one way jesus looked at them was with the eyes of the father with a mission in the heart jesus was not a reactor as we are jesus was a gospel actor gospel action and gospel action was to gain everyone for the father giving us great confidence great confidence to turn to him whatever is wrong whatever is sinful in our hearts to turn to him and believe may god will forgive me may god will accept me may god will never reject me the most painful thing in the world is to be rejected this is a beautiful book written by john powell an american psychologist priest um, the name of the book is why am i afraid to tell you what i am it says all of us are afraid to tell others what we really are because there's a fear in the depth of my mind if others come to know i am a sinner i did something wrong i could be despised i could be rejected and re- to be rejected is the most painful thing and we have this fear for god may god could reject me we don't know who our god is we don't know how our god responds to us when we turn to him this samaritan woman she was trying to hide a lot hide everything of the past a stinking past dirty memories painful experiences if anyone tells you oh i don't care for god if anyone tells you i i don't want to go to church well you must know it's not arrogance even if it is arrogance behind it there's a fear it's a shame it's a shame and fear and guilt i don't want to go to my god because when i go to my god i know my god my god will not accept me so i don't care for him you know um a mother once came to my room and said to me father i have a son he doesn't want even to pray what a son i have father i don't know why god gave me such a son i had thought the son must be a criminal the way that the mother said about him 
and a frail looking boy came into my room i went to him i held him close and i asked him my son how are you he said very bad he said very bad oh really bad in our streets and everywhere i am bad for everyone i am bad look very arrogant asked him no you are not bad you are not bad really my son i can feel it I can feel it you are a wonderful child god loves you you know no nobody loves me nobody cares to me i'm bad i spoke to him for some time at one time i showed the crucifix in my room near my desk i told him look at that that's what god did for us that's what god did for you he offered his life that you and i may be saved and he began to shed tears i told him my son your mother tells me you don't even pray you don't go to church and now the whole tone changed he said father no i don't pray i don't go to church because i know god does not love me how do you know this i tell you god loves you oh no father no god does not love me because before i and the church my mother will go in and tell jesus how bad i am and jesus will believe only my mother nobody believe me father i know god does not love me i told him no no and he went out of my room as a happy boy hallelujah hallelujah you and i shall know this if you and i cannot go for confession and tell god i have sinned without any justification without any argument if we are not able to say it it's only because we do not know who we are saying this to the god we say this to is not a judging god is not a condemning god is not a god who came to punish but a god who saves us and jesus revealed it at one moment jesus revealed all the sin in her heart all the sin in her heart the man you live with is not your husband you had five men living with you but then normally if you say to a man or a woman if you tell others you are a sinner they would be threatened they would justify they would argue but not this woman for her it was a revelation for her it was a liberation that someone accepted me as i am jesus knew who she was at the same time jesus was not arrogant did not argue did not uh, question her did not condemn her knowing every sin of her heart jesus was gentle towards her and that was the liberation she said to jesus master give me the living water you promised st john tells us jesus was speaking of the holy spirit i don't want to drink of this water and she knew the water she was drinking was a symbol of her sinful life she was trying to drink water take nourishment gain and pleasure from men after men no i don't want this i want the living water the holy spirit that you promised me she felt a new creation she felt the old is gone already all the sins forgiven we are told she left that water jar at the feet of jesus at the feet of jesus she left the water jar that water jar was the symbol of her sinful life empty life sinful but empty that water jar was empty wasn't it every sin makes us more and more empty a rich man who makes money through unjust ways is a very poor man very empty man he knows that money does not belong to him every woman who goes about cribbing and complaining about others knows she's an empty woman she's trying to cover up 
is trying to fill her heart emptiness by finding fault with others every sin makes us more and more empty the hollow becomes deeper by every sin we commit but that empty jar the wrong way of living she left at the feet of jesus she showed that courage when she was refreshed with the living waters of the holy spirit the forgiving love of god she felt different she went back and told everyone i met a man she was telling the people in the town of sikar and the people knew who she was to them she was saying i met a man ah another man no none of them passed that comment because everything was different about her the way she walked the way she talked the way she smiled the way she gestured with her hands everything was different about her you know what the whole town believed in the words of this sinful woman and all of them came out to meet this man whom she said is a prophet is the messiah and jesus stayed with them which means jesus became part of that samaritan community rejected and despised and condemned by the jews because jesus could not condemn them he could not condemn anyone because everyone who came to jesus was a son a beloved son of the heavenly father whom the father sent sent to him hallelujah hallelujah this samaritan woman event should give us great confidence however sinful i am whatever our ancestors may have done whatever quarrels i have with others you and i shall know my god is waiting for me to forgive me to turn everything to my good let's keep our hands open in front of us oh god i have a past painful memories of sin haunting me hurts and wounds burning in my heart i want the living waters of the holy spirit i open my heart my life my past for the living waters of the holy spirit to flow upon me to flow into me and refresh me and forgive me and save me hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah.